Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, I will be giving you guys an overview of how CSS works. Um, so this is actually uh, the second video of a three-part series that I'm currently developing. Uh, the first video, which I posted yesterday, covers uh, the basics of HTML. And this video, will, we will be covering the basics of CSS. So if you're not familiar with CSS, um, this is pretty much just going to get you kind of started in the right direction. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead here and get started. Um, so if you've watched my first video, um, an introduction to web development with HTML, um, this is pretty much the same page that I'm working with, but in this case, I've removed all the CSS styles. So you're going to notice that it looks a bit different. This is pretty much what a typical HTML, what a typical HTML page looks like when it doesn't have any CSS styles applied to it, right? So it looks very disorganized and it's not very pleasant on the eyes, right? Um, so that's where CSS comes in. You use CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Um, it's pretty much a uh, kind of like a styling language that you use uh, in conjunction with HTML. Um, so if you actually go to the W3 Schools website um, and if you click under CSS, um, they'll uh, you can they actually give you a pretty um, pretty little. Uh, good introduction here to what CSS is. Um, so CSS again stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS describes how, HT, how HTML elements are to be displayed on screen, paper, or in other media. Uh, CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once, and that is very true. Um, so then after that, if you go under CSS syntax, it'll give you an overview of how the syntax is structured. Um, so basically we have our selectors and then we have our declarations, right? So if we scroll down a bit here, we'll see here that we are, um, in this example here, they're targeting the P tag or the P element in HTML, um, which is considered like a global element. And then they are, the, and then they're, and then they have a few declarations here. We have a color declaration and a text align declaration, right? And then for the color, they're giving it a value of red. And for text line, they're giving it a value of center. So this is pretty much what a CSS class looks like. Um, in regards to you know CSS itself, it's not something hard to learn, but there is a lot. Uh, there is a lot involved. Like it is a, like a pretty uh, extensive, um, you know, lot like library to work with, right? Like if you notice here on W3 Schools, like there are. A lot of different things you can do with CSS. So, uh, you know, I, I like to say that CSS, it's easy to learn, but takes a long time to master because there's just so much to cover in CSS. They're, they're really, it's very powerful. It's very flexible in what you can do with it. Um, so I highly recommend um, always keeping W3 schools on your, you know, having it bookmarked and always referencing this website if you need to learn something new about it. Um, yeah, so this, this site's great. And actually, I should mention that uh, this the, that the W3 Schools website has actually grown quite a bit over the last, uh, I don't know, um, few years, I guess. But uh, I remember when the site first launched, I mean, they were really just covering, you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and maybe a couple of other languages. But now they're covering a lot more. Um, they got PHP here. They got, uh, you know, they got Django, Pandas. Um, what else do they have here? TypeScript, Angular, Git, Postgres, SQL, MongoDB. So it's grown quite a bit. Um, yeah, so this is one website that I highly recommend just keeping bookmarked. And if you need to learn anything new for CSS or HTML or JavaScript or any other programming language related to the web, um, it's, a, it's a great source of reference. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna jump back here into my page. And um, so here in VS Code, I have a blank uh, CSS file, and this is actually being imported here in uh, HTML, right? So we're importing it here using the uh, link tag. Mm. So I'm just going to go ahead here. I'm just going to start um, adding some styles to this page. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to target some global elements, right? So global elements are uh, HTML tags. So we're going to be targeting HTML tags directly. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to target the body and the HTML tag. Uh, I'm going to give it a box sizing of, uh, what is that, border box. And then I'm going to give 
Uh, I'm going to give these elements a height of 100%. Okay, so you're not going to really notice any changes on the page. Um, so basically what the box sizing declaration does is it just sets the, um, the way that the HTML elements are rendered in the page and how the uh, paddings and the margins and some other styles get applied to HTML elements. Um, this border box is the one that I prefer working with. So I always, this is the first thing I always set when I'm creating a, uh, when I'm working on a new HTML project. Um, after that, I'm just going to target the body element directly. Um, so you'll notice here that I'm actually targeting the body element twice. Um, so this is a common practice um, amongst CSS developers. Uh, so the reason why I'm, I'm kind of grouping it up here with the HTML element is because I want these two specific declarations to be applied to both the body and the HTML. So I can kind of, so I can group them up like this if I wanted to. And then if I wanted to add, uh, you know, specific declarations to the body, I can redeclare it here and then um, apply some addi additional declarations. So here I'm, I'm going to give the body a padding of zero, a margin of zero, and I'm just going to set the font family to Arial. Okay. All right, so right there, you'll see that uh, the font size has already changed in the browser, or sorry, the font style. Um, I could also set the font size if I wanted to, so I can make that 10 pixels, right? And you'll see that the font size is now a lot smaller. Um, there's also different values that you can work with when you're using the font size declaration. You can use 10 pixels. You can also use REM. So basically, typically what I like to do is, in the, for the body, I like to set the font size to 16 pixels. Um, and then from there on, we can use REM or we can use like um, viewport width or viewport. Uh, yeah, viewport width is another common value, which makes the text responsive, but I'm not gonna really be getting into that. Uh, for, this, for this demonstration, for this video, I'm just gonna be using pixels just to keep things nice and simple. Um, okay, so the font size is 16 pixels. We'll leave it at that. Um, then after that, I am going to, let's start, uh, you know what, let's start defining some of the wrapper, some of the elements of the wrapper class. So let me just make a quick note here. Um, so these are global HTML elements. And then these are class-based um, class-based style, right? All right, so the reason these, uh, why I wrote class-based styles is because now we're going to be targeting HTML elements based on specific classes that have been assigned to them, right? So if I go back into my index.html file, you'll notice here that I have a div with a, with a class name of wrapper assigned to it. So we have the class attribute defined and then we're giving it a name of wrapper. So I can actually target this particular div by this class name. So I'm gonna copy that. And the way we do that is if it's if we're if we're targeting a div by its class name, we always start off with a period, and then we type in the name of the class, and then we get our curly braces. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to add a background color to the page. So let's give that a quick color. Okay, so you'll see. Okay, so it's not actually being applied to the page; it's being applied to the wrapper. Um, so we have the background color, then I'm going to assign uh, a specific display type. Um, so I want all of, the, all of the content within my wrapper to be displayed um, in a flex model. So I'm going to do display flex. Okay, so now you'll see that the uh, that everything's kind of been rearranged, um, kind of like in a row format or column format. Um, then I'm going to use a line item center. And I'm going to set the flex direction to column. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit more organized. Uh, what else have I set here? Padding, let's give this a padding of 30 pixels. Just to space things out a little bit better. Um, okay, so we have all that in there. Okay. Um, all right, so now I want to just add some styles to, okay, so let's do 
Okay, so maybe the next one we'll do is the link tag. So if we go back into the HTML file here, you'll notice that I have an anchor tag and I have a class of link assigned to it. Let's grab this guy. Okay, and for the link, um, I already, there's, there's quite a bit of styling here that I wanna apply. So I actually already have it uh, pre-coded. I'm just gonna paste it in here. Um, okay, so for this link, uh, for this link class, I'm setting a text decoration of none. So you'll notice that this link is going to be targeting this line of text right here. This is a link. So that's basically what I'm currently styling. So the text decoration, um, I'm setting that to none. So that's going to remove the underline. I'm going to make the text color white. I'm going to give it a background color of red. Uh, I'm going to set the display of this link to inline block, which is a uh, another uh, rendering type that you can add to an HTML element. So you'll notice up here on the wrapper, we added a display of flex. This one has a display of inline block. Um, we're gonna give it a padding just of 10, um, 10 pixels along the top and bottom and 15 pixels, 15 pixels along the, the left and right side of the element. And then we're gonna give it a border radius of four pixels. So that's gonna give it some nice rounded corners. Uh, then we're just assigning a font family, uh, text transform, we're gonna make it uppercase. So the text is all uppercase. Font weight equals bold and font size equals 0.7 REM. Um, so this is another um, kind of another value type that you can use for font sizes. Um, so there's, like I mentioned earlier, there's REM, there's also viewport width that you can use to make your text fully responsive. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna set this to 16, I'll set this to 16 pixels. Okay. All right, so there we have our styling be, being applied to our anchor tag. Um, actually, let me make the text a tad bit smaller. Okay, that looks good. Um, okay, so now, um, okay, so now um, you'll notice that the uh, that the anchor tag and the image just beneath it are kind of fetching, and I kind of don't want that to happen, right? So what I could do is under my link class, I could give this a whoops. Not sure what I was taking there. I could give this a margin bottom of 15 pixels, right? Or what I could do is I could um, I could apply that margin on a global scale, so it'll apply it to all anchor tags throughout uh, throughout my project. So I could just define um, the A element here, and then move this here. Hit save, and you'll see that we still get that same margin being applied, right? But now it's being applied on a global scale instead of uh, uh, instead of a more um, uh, I guess localized scale you could call it right or an, or on a more targeted scale um, okay so okay so we have that in there and then okay so another thing I can show you are uh, the pseudo classes so for pseudo classes in CSS a pseudo class basically looks like this. We have a semicolon and then you're going to be hover. Um, so this is pretty much what declares a pseudo um, class, I guess. Um, so basically what we're telling, what we're, what we're doing here is we're telling the link that we want to apply a hover effect to this button, right? Uh, and then here I can do background color blue, hit save. And now when I hover over the, the button, it turns blue, right? So if I were to quickly comment this out, and I hover over the button, it doesn't change colors. But here we're, de we're defining a pseudo class. And now we get that uh, that interactivity taking place uh, upon, um, you know, when we're hovering over it with the mouse, right? If you want to learn more about pseudo classes, you can learn more about that here on W3 Schools. What are pseudo classes? And there's also pseudo elements, right? <clears throat> okay, so now um let's organize this form element here a little bit better so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create another global i'm going to target another global element it's going to be the form element and i'm going to give this a display of flex and i'm going to give it a flex direction of column okay so that looks a little bit better now um and then within here so within that form element, we have labels and we have uh, input tags. 
Um, so I'm actually going to target the label. So let's target the label element and let's give these guys a margin bottom uh, 10 pixels. We can space that out a little bit better. Actually, you know what? Let's apply it to both top and bottom. So let's do this. Okay, that looks better. Um, so basically here, um, there's different ways you can work with margins in CSS. You can specifically define which, um, kind of like which side you want to apply a margin to. So you can do uh, margin top, margin bottom, margin left, margin right. Um, or if you use the, uh, just use kind of like the, I guess the, the, the global margin declaration. Um, you can actually assign it to all um, four sides concurrently. So we can do this, right? If I wanted to add, um, so this is the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. And if I wanted to assign more uh, more spacing along the bottom of the label field, I can make that 30. And you'll see here that we get a lot more space now between the label and the input field. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay, so it looks a little bit better. Um, and next we will apply some styling to the table element here. Um, so for the table, so let's target that table element. And what we'll do is we'll give it um, border spacing. Whoops. Let's give it a border spacing of zero. Um, and then we'll give it, uh, let's remove any it's gonna make a border none, border spacing zero, border none, and then we can do table tr th, and then table tr td, and then here we can add a border of one pixel solid. Uh, I'll just make it gray for now, and then let's give it a padding of ten pixels, and then a border spacing of zero. Let's hit save. Okay, so now you'll see that we have some styling applied to the table, so a little looks a little bit more organized. Um, and then so you'll notice here that the file field and the table are kind of right up next to each other. Um, so I could just add some margin to the top of the table. We'll do a margin top, let's say 20 pixels. Okay, so I'll add some spacing in between there. Okay, so now it's so now the page is starting to look more like what it looked like in the in the first video, right? Um, and then we can also add some styling to the input fields. So let's target input. Um, let's give it a padding of ten pixels. Hit save. So you'll notice now that we have a much larger input field. We can also do the same thing for the select list. Let's target select. Uh, again, same thing here. Let's give it a padding of 10 pixels. Okay, so now our input fields and our select lists are a lot larger. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So, I mean, uh, you know, CSS, like I said, it's not, um, it's easy to learn, but there is, but there are a lot of things to cover in CSS. Like it has so many features built in that it could take you quite a while to really become familiar with everything. Um, I've been working with CSS now for, I don't know, well over 10 years, and there's always new things that I'm learning about it. Um, for example, just to give you a, a quick um, uh, example here of like some additional functionality built into CSS, you can actually do calculations with CSS. Um, so I'm going to do calc and then, sorry, width, going to equal calc. And then here I can do 100% minus 300 pixels. So I'm applying this to my wrapper class. So if I hit save, you'll notice here that the wrapper, it, 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 it gets applied a width of 100%, but then I'm also subtracting 300 pixels from the right side of it, right? Um, well, it, it automatically gets applied to this side of the element. All right, so if I set that to zero, then it goes back to 100% full width. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with CSS. Um, you can do calculations. You can also do very advanced uh, uh, 
like transformations with 2D and CSS. You can also do animations. Um, so it has like an animation system built in. So again, guys, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with CSS. Um, so this is really just scratching the surface of what you can do with CSS. Um, but I hope this was kind of like a good starting ground for you guys and kind of get your feet wet and what you can do with CSS and how powerful it really is. Um, so again, like I mentioned earlier, um, if you need to learn more, reference the w3schools.com website. There's also a lot of very good courses on Udemy that, uh, that teach HTML and CSS. Uh, so I would highly recommend checking out Udemy as well. And uh, also make sure you know to grab their courses when they're on sale because you can get a very good course for like $20 and there is a lot that you can learn from those courses. Um, so guys, I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm going to have the CSS code listed on my website so you guys will have a point of reference. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in part three, which is going to be coming out tomorrow. So see you guys then. Thanks for watching.